What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and after a bunch of you have requested it, today we're finally reviewing the brand new Optima P2. All right, so today we're checking out the Optima P2. So this is the successor to the P1, which was the runner up for the best ultra short throw projector in last year's best projector video. So the Optima P2 does have a few differences from the P1, which I'll talk about in a second, but the very first thing you'll notice is that it's white instead of black. I know a lot of you guys probably don't like this since you guys constantly go off in the comment section about white projectors, but I assume they did this to match the competition since everybody else seems to be making white projectors. Hate it or love it, it pretty much looks like a white P1. You still have the gray fabric on the front that's hiding the 40 watt internal speakers, and the power button is now silver instead of copper. You still get the USB and HDMI 1.4 port on the right side, and the rest of your ports are on the back. So the P2 has pretty much the exact same ports as the P1. You still get two HDMI 2.0 ports, an ethernet port, a stereo output, and a couple of USB ports. All right, so aside from the color, how does the Optima P2 differ from the P1? Well, the very first thing is the price. So priced at $3,300, the P2 cost about $500 less than the P1, which is a pretty big deal, especially considering it has better specs. So some of the key features include a six segment RGB RGB color wheel instead of RGBY. It also has much better contrast with a two million to one contrast ratio. And last but not least, the P2 now comes with game mode, so it has much better input lag. And speaking of gaming, today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Now it's been a while since I've had time to play a mobile game, but I gotta say this one is pretty fun. So if you've never heard of it, Raid is a 3D fantasy RPG for desktop and mobile, where you collect champions from different factions and level them up to battle against AI or other players in PvP. Each champion has their own set of skill trees and there are millions of artifacts so you can come up with your own unique strategy. When I first heard of this game, I didn't think I was gonna be into it, but after I downloaded it and realized that I hadn't moved from my seat in three hours, I realized why this game is so popular. Not only does it have great graphics, but there's so much to do in the game that you'll never get bored with it. You even get daily rewards just for logging in and they just released the Artifact Forge where you can save time and craft your own artifacts and there's a new advanced quest system with even more rewards. Not to mention they've recently added a bunch of new champions and they're developing a new Doom Tower which adds even more exciting content. So check out the links in the video description and if you're a new player you'll get 100,000 free silver and a free champion. And all this cool stuff will be waiting for you in the chest right here for the next 30 days. So I want to thank Ray for sponsoring today's video and let's jump back into the Optima P2 review. So the P2 is an ultra short throw projector. And if you're not familiar with these, I did do a video recently where I compared an ultra short throw projector to a standard projector. So I'll put a card up here for you to check that video out. But being an ultra short throw means that you put this projector right in front of your screen. So I'll be using a 120 inch CLR3 ambient light rejecting screen from Elite Screens, which works great for an ultra short throw projector. But if you wanna save some money, you could use a regular screen and the image will still look good since the projector is so bright. So like most ultra short throw projectors, the P2 is very easy to set up. You just sit it on a TV stand and adjust the feet to get it lined up on the screen. Now it can be kind of tricky and it does take a bit of patience, but you can use the SmartFit app to help you get it lined up. Now one thing you need to keep in mind is that even though this is an ultra short throw, just like the P1, the back of the projector needs to sit about 15 inches away from the screen in order to produce a 120 inch image. And also like the P1, you need to also consider the vertical offset since the projector needs to be positioned more than a foot below the bottom of the screen if you go with 120 inches. So this means you might either need high ceilings or a really low stand. So with a new lower price and added features, how does the P2 perform? Well, it's still running the Aptoid OS, which I absolutely despise. I tried my best to like this interface and I was pretty soft on it in my Optima P1 review, but Aptoid is bad enough that I can't really consider this a smart projector. It's basically a stripped down version of Android. You can install apps, stream video, and now it has an improved frame digital art screensaver, which is pretty cool, but the interface is clunky, the apps are buggy, and the video quality you get from the apps is pretty bad. I would have loved to see an actual Android TV OS on this projector considering the price. So Optima, if you're listening, please find a way to do this. Anyways, just know that I would definitely recommend a streamer like the Nvidia Shield or Apple TV if you want the best streaming experience. 
Thankfully, the menu system is pretty good. So you have the main menu, which allows you to get to all of your settings, including picture modes and advanced image settings. And it still has the shortcut menu that you can access by holding down the button on the remote. And it looks like they added more options to this menu, which is nice to see. All right, so how is the image quality? Well, thanks to the RGB RGB color wheel, the color accuracy is not only better than the P1, but it's better than what I've seen from other bright Optima projectors. It's just something about Optima's imaging system that always has great color, even on bright projectors. Cinema mode looks the best and doesn't really sacrifice that much brightness for good color accuracy. Game mode looks good too and adds a little bit more brightness. Bright mode is super bright, but way too green, but it probably would work okay in a room with a a lot of sunlight. And even though I didn't think the slight increase in contrast would be noticeable, I could definitely see it. Not only does it have better overall contrast, but it also has noticeably better black levels compared to the P1. So not only does SDR content look good, but HDR from the P2 looks great too. As I always say, it's really tough for a projector to produce a good looking HDR image, so they all have their own way of tone mapping. That being said, I personally like the way that the HDR looks on this projector. The colors are nicely saturated and it maintains a good bit of brightness. This is really where the RGB RGB color wheel shines and considering they were able to maintain high color accuracy with such a bright projector is pretty amazing. And even though it's been a while since I've watched 3D, I did blow the dust off my 3D glasses. And considering the brightness and color accuracy from this projector, 3D content looks pretty good. All right, so how about gaming? Well, if you watched my Optima P1 review, you'll know that one of the major downsides to that projector was really high input lag. Well, Optima has added a game mode to the P2 to help with input lag, and it definitely helps. So I measured the input lag somewhere around 66 to 68 milliseconds, which isn't amazing, but still considerably better than what we got from the P1. The only downside to this is that it pretty much disables all image processing, including smart fit and pure motion. Either way, I think game mode is a plus for casual gamers out there who want the benefits of an ultra short throw. And when it comes to sound, the speakers on the P2 are fantastic. They have an incredibly wide soundstage and they do a great job of filling the room with sound. The only thing that's missing is bass since they do lack quite a bit on the bottom end. Luckily, there is a stereo output on the back which can be used to connect a powered subwoofer. So if you do plan on using these speakers to watch movies, then I would certainly recommend at least a cheap sub. All right, so how does the P2 stack up against the other ultra short throw competition? Well, as you know, the reigning champion for best ultra short throw with its three laser system, super short throw, great operating system, and super sharp image is the LG HU85 LA. But priced around $6,000, that's gonna be out of the question for most people. For $3,300, I think the P2 is a good alternative to the LG, considering it still has fantastic image quality and better speakers, even though the Aptoid inner face and longer throw is where it falls short. So what about the Vava 4K, which was just recently on sale for $2,000? Well, the P2 is brighter, has better contrast, better color accuracy, and better input lag than the Vava, while the Vava has a slightly better interface, the ability to go up to 150 inches, and a lower price. Now, when it's on sale for $2,000, I do think the Vava is a no-brainer if you're trying to get the best bang for your buck, but at its retail price of $2,700, I think the P2 could be a better option considering it produces a better image and has that way better input lag. Then you have the Samsung Ultra Short Throws that were announced this year, but I'm still waiting on Samsung to send those out, so unfortunately, we'll have to wait on that. So overall, the Optima P2 is a worthy successor to the P1, and it's nice that Optima is offering it at a lower price. I would have liked for them to ditch the Aptoid interface and for it to have a slightly better throw, but considering they lowered the price while improving several features on the P1, I think it's a good move. If you're looking for the best ultra short throw 4K projector and you don't wanna spend $6,000, then the Optima P2 should probably be at the top of your list. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, as always, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.